Welcome to Powerboat Television, I'm Steve Bull. This week we're in Sarnia at the International Powerboat Festival. And yes, this is a weekend all about boats, both for the spectators wanting to check out this high-octane awesomeness and for boaters who want to get out on the water. But the whole thing kicks off on Friday night with an epic riverfront concert. Please give a warm welcome back to the stage, the Trues. Both Friday and Saturday nights feature great concerts. Friday by Chance was my favorite band, The Trues, so I had to check it out, you know, for research purposes. Next morning, with some epic Canadian rock music still ringing in my ears, we gathered at Sarnia Bay Marina for the Poker Run Drivers Meeting. Some great prizes for the day. You know, the grand prize obviously is a dock. Uh, That's right, the know, grand prize is a dock for a season. Prizes like that lead to a great turnout, which is even more impressive because this is the first year they've ever tried this at the Powerboat Festival, which is in its sixth year. We teamed up with Bridgeview Boat Sales and some local radio and online personalities to form the Media Dream Team entry, and we were taking part on a Sun Chaser pontoon with a 90 horsepower Suzuki. But limited power and a basic pontoon boat isn't a problem. Poker runs happen all over the place, and most of them are for big, fast boats because they're timed. This one's different. Time is not a factor, which is a good thing because you have all kinds of different boats. There's Sea Doos. There's pontoons, and there's some of those big, loud, go-fast ones, too. But overall, it's fun. This is the first one ever. I think it's a success. It'll be even bigger success when we win. I got a good feeling. We got a couple more cards to get. I got an ace. Matt, I think you got a king, or did you get an ace? Nice. Let's go for the royal flush. The full course is going to take a few hours, but knowing we can go at our own pace removes any stress and real competitiveness. And if this isn't proof that top speed and fastest run doesn't matter, I don't know what is. You still have to complete the course though and pick up a card at each stop. Sweet! Smells like a winner. A very cool part of the whole event is that each boat gets an aerial shot taken during the run and you pick up the photo at the final stop. As much fun as we're having on the media boat, and clearly everyone else is too, there's a much more somber backstory to this event. A person in our community passed away, uh, very big in the youth community, so we saw the opportunity to do a poker run, raise some money for charity, and start a scholarship fund in relation to Joanne LaBelle from Harmony for You. That's right, this great day on the water with lots of fun and laughs and amazing prizes is also for an amazingly great cause. Later in the show, we'll continue on the poker run and hear from Rick LaBelle on what the turnout just months after his wife's death means to the family, and we'll see a lot more race action. Welcome back to the amazingly blue, if not turquoise, waters of the St. Clair River between Port Huron, Michigan and Sarnia, Ontario. Here at the halfway mark of the poker run, there was a break for barbecue lunch and for everyone to take a breather, share some laughs and stretch their legs. All four of them. It was here chatting with fellow Media Dream Team member Matt McNeil that I discovered that the host of K106.3 wasn't just taking part in his first poker run, this was the first time boating in his adopted hometown. It's a completely different element. So like going up in an airplane, looking down, you see like everything is laid out differently and it really puts a different perspective on it. Adds a whole new element to your summer too. I mean, you know, you're looking back on your city and it looks completely different and you're out in the middle of the water with the waves, the sun. It's pretty awesome. Getting people out to explore the water is the entire point of a fun poker run. But the charity aspect to honor Rick LaBelle's late wife gives it an even deeper meaning. 
Unfortunately, after you know years of battling her illness, um, she succumbed to it four months ago. The sad undertone is overshadowed by optimism of a great cause and a great event that's going to fund a meaningful youth scholarship in Joanne's name. The hope was this would draw anyone and everyone out to participate, and it seems to have done just that. I'm just overwhelmed and, and, and getting emotional at the support and the, and, and the cause. Most of them knew Joanne. She knew what she was about. She knew what she did for our community, for our children. So I just want to say thank you. With that, it was time to head back out. We had another card to pick up on the way and a bit of a hike back to the marina. Down at the southern extreme of the course, the clouds closed in and some of the high-powered participants hit the throttle to race home. We didn't exactly have the same option, but we didn't mind. We're having too much fun on our pontoon. About 30 minutes later, we're cruising back into downtown Sarnia where the riverfront vendor fair and street performers were still at it. We tied up as a few drops of rain fell, but it didn't last. And the poker run ended at Stokes Bay Grill and Bar where we got our final card and where teams were able to pick up their already printed and framed aerial photo of their boat. Seriously, how cool is that? So that was the grand prize. With a flush, ace high. Yeah. Yeah. And the Andrea yeah. the Nortec. But the spirit of philanthropy was clearly strong here. The winner of the dock for next season immediately upped the fundraising ante of the poker run. Danny DeAndre just won this prize. He wants to donate it back and raffle it off right now. Yeah. That led to an unexpected top up to the scholarship fund. Brian Halfpenny, 2200 bucks. If that won't kick off a celebratory mood, I don't know what will. Sunday lived up to its name and was a perfect day for the thousands who flocked to the riverfront. Having a city right on the water is something organizers play up and having a different city in a different country right across the water gives this a unique flavor. It's truly the only international uh, powerboat festival that I know about because it's on both sides of the border. On land, it's all free thanks to our, our wonderful sponsors. We have food vendors, we have buskers, balloon makers, stilt walkers, huge inflatable kids area, uh, kids workshops, so a whole lot of things going on. The big finale to the event takes place on the final afternoon. The high-octane racers tear up the St. Clair River between Sarnia and Port Huron, plying the waters of both Ontario and Michigan in the process. And the crowd finds ways to keep fueled on land, too. There were a few incidents during the races, which is a risk of pushing so much power to the limit, but there were no serious injuries. It's no wonder more than 30,000 people show up over the weekend. How cool is this, and where else can you be this close?